What's up, Ben? How goes it, man? Let me know if the uh, audio levels are good and everything. Wanted to start a couple minutes early. Get things moving and shaking. What's up, Gavin? Good, I'm glad. Uh, it's hard to know if this is like the right thing to do. I like doing it because it's a lot of fun. Um, I do have my Holt Blade Works Spectre arriving on Wednesday. Um, and I plan to do this again. I think three in a row might be a bit much, but um, you tell me. I think it's really fun. I think it's better than just uh, filming like a video of me unboxing the knife. And I think uh, for these particular knives I've been opening, um, you know, it's I think it's good for you guys to see, like, my real reactions and stuff, um, you know, before I start forming opinions and whatnot. Uh, since it says knives, I'm assuming spa day is over. You're correct, man. Um, this feels like two knives. I'm I'm told that both knives are in this box. I'm not 100%. Jason didn't say it for sure that they were both in here, but uh, I told him I wanted them both back at the same time, and he told me that the knife was finished. Um so, yeah, I'm 99.9% .9 sure both knives are in the box. And then my face in prototype that he has, I'm leaving with him until he gets around to it. I'm not too worried about that knife. Um, and so some people had brought up last time, like, the delay issue, which is not really an issue. It's pretty normal for live streams. Um, but I, like, looked at the other options, and I can go with, like, an ultra-low latency option where um y like where it's a little bit more live interaction with the chat except it tells me that like the quality of the stream is going to go down and you guys will see it like st you know pause and buffer and like y i can't stream uh in certain hd resolutions so it's already kind of i feel like streams are already kind of bad quality especially when you're looking at something like a knife you know trying to see details like it's already pretty grainy with the phone streaming thing that I'm using, so um, we'll see uh, what goes on there. Um, Jason arrived. What is up? That's so cool. Uh, Aaron and I had mentioned earlier that we weren't sure if you were going to jump on. Super good to see you, man. Oh, man, I'm so excited. The maker is here himself. What's up, Aaron? Thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah, Gavin, I'm looking forward to the Holt as well. Uh, <laughs> I'll like the knife. I'll like the knife. I'm sure of it. Um, but yeah, Jason, I'm really excited to see my Tribeca again, though, after all the updates. Um, how's everybody feeling? Is the sound good? Is the quality good? Are we looking good? I think once we get like 10 or 15 people on here, we'll, uh, we'll rip this thing open. Um, what knife to use to open the box? That is the question. If you guys were here, uh, in my last stream, I have this mini Bushido that I really like. Yeah, I don't think the delay's that bad either, to be frank, uh, Ben. Um, you guys might be noticing the Bushido clip is gone. Well, hey, I'm glad to see you here, man. Um, you know... I, you, these things usually run long, certainly don't feel the need to stick around for the whole thing, but, uh, definitely would be cool to have you here when we rip these things open. Uh, it's just now 8 p.m., so I'll give everybody a few more minutes to roll in. Uh, I know there were a couple people that said that they were going to come, uh, so we'll hang out probably around 8, 10, we'll, uh, we'll rip the box open, give people a few minutes to roll in. So you guys might notice the Bushido clip is gone. Um, I did send that off to my main man, Adam Purvis. What up, Throat Scratch? Thanks for joining us. Adam's going to throw some sweet color on that clip for me. Because he's a boss. Ben, uh, I think I answered your question among the delay there. 
But uh, so you guys obviously saw that I really enjoyed this Bushido when I got it. Uh, had it for a few days now. Still love it. Uh, took it apart a couple times to check things out. Action's running super smooth. Not super smooth. Pretty smooth. Smooth enough. And uh, yeah, I'm liking it a lot. It's a sweet knife. All right. I love the thick stock on that mini Bushido. Uh, so it's funny. Jason is actually the one who uh, told me to go ahead and measure it. He was interested to see how thick it was. Uh, we saw 0 .1, 0 0.19 inches, which isn't like insane. I think it's just because the rest of the knife is so slim and small uh, that it's like disproportionate. And I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a thick, it's a thick blade stock. I mean... It's significant, but, like, I don't know. If you bring it up next to the Thorburn, like, it's definitely thicker than the Thorburn. But, uh, I mean, obviously, in relation to the rest of the size of the knife, it's super thick. But that was kind of, um, that was kind of the point, right, of me buying it was the stylistic uh, nature of the super thick blade stock. But it's not quite as thick as people think. Uh, I think Jason told me he thought it was a quarter of an inch. Um, and it was not quite that much. Uh, let's see. Have you started to work with the dragon scale yet? Uh, yeah, Winger, you like that material. Uh, you have the black stuff on your Kirby Lambert. I don't like that, really, to be honest. I wouldn't want to use it. It seems like... It looks like a fake material, even though it's not, and it's super premium. So I think maybe if I saw it in person and got to touch it, I'd be a little bit more inclined to enjoy it. But, like, pictures just make it look kind of fake. Just finished grinding the blade, huh, Jason? That's cool. 25 millimeter fixed blade. I have not. DB Blades. I do know the name DB Blades. I have heard of that before. All right, people are rolling in. Really excited to get this open. It's quite uh, quite the exercise in self-control sitting next to this package all day, I must say. Uh, Jason's done some really cool stuff to this knife. You guys will see in a moment. We have sort of like a semi-floating zirconium backspacer. Galactic bacon on the blade. So pumped. First piece of galactic bacon in the collection. I was mainly inspired by my friend Sid, uh, who has a Jason Guthrie uh, with some bacon, and it looks fantastic. Jason will be oil quenching the dragon scale, dragon scale blade. Interesting. Oh, brought the uh, fixed blade to blade show? Interesting. This is uh, perhaps the longest 10 minutes of my life. <laughs> right? Oh, man, I know. It's been... Uh, so I was telling Jason and a, and a couple friends today, this live stream, uh, you know, I said it was going to happen on Saturday because that's when these knives were scheduled for delivery. Um, and then halfway through the day, I realized they're not coming. Um they had been left at a – it was priority mail, but they had been left at a sorting facility in Florida for 31 hours. Um, and so, yeah, they didn't come on Saturday. So I had to cancel the stream. That was super embarrassing. Did not want to do that. And then today, I actually didn't realize that they were coming signature required. Uh, and my mail normally comes at like 4.30. So I'm kind of keeping an eye out, keeping an ear out. And uh, at, 4 .0, at 4.19 – I checked the tracking and it says delivery attempted, left slip. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I already scheduled this stream. Like, I need these knives. So I look at the time and the timestamp from the delivery and it was like 15 minutes before I checked. So I jumped in my car and I drove around the neighborhood and I tracked down the mailman and I snagged this right out of the truck because, um, yeah, I was just not going to have that at all. 
got any South African knives coming in? Gavin, I do, as a matter of fact. JD Vandeventer's first run of 30 gold and gold mini should be arriving sometime in early February. Um, the original delivery date for that was Christmas, which is why I agreed to doing the build instead of just buying the prototype that's for sale on Tri-City, which is very similar to the configuration I've gone with. Um, unfortunately, JD failed to meet that deadline um but he has told me that he should be in the states uh pretty much any day now end of january and should have the knife i haven't really heard from him i think i'll hit him up soon to uh pick on him for that and then obviously at uh new york custom knife show i picked up this herukis blue matters uh ll07 i do have a herukis ll15 coming uh which i won in a raffle so that'll be another south african knife and i of course picked up my k1 at the uh, new york custom knife show as well all right let's see it's almost time i know i had a couple other people that said they wanted to be here but not going to hold up the whole thing so we'll give it a couple more minutes so uh yeah definitely the um jd vandeventer gold should be arriving so yeah it's the same build as the prototype that is for sale on tri-city customs but uh the clip is going to be a little bit bigger and hopefully should be matching in terms of colors um what's up zoo york thanks for joining us you did make it indeed um and then we're doing carbon fiber, which is going to be finished in the same texturing that the Kenpachi that I had was. Uh, so that'll be sweet. A Grimsmo Norseman on eBay has 10 minutes left and is at 1650. What the fuck? Is it because it's number 800 or because it looks like Nick Shabazz's? That does seem a little excessive. I don't know why my camera, by the way, it keeps refocusing on something in the corner there. That's hopefully going to go away the hell are you doing um oh what's up echo right okay i thought that sounded familiar uh hey josh thanks for joining us um i don't know why this keeps doing the focus thing let me see if i can fuck with it what is it trying to focus on whatever uh it's almost 8 10 the only person who I haven't seen yet who said that they were trying to make it was my friend Rich, um, but he is a little bit busy right now, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's not able to make it in time. Uh, but yeah, so the gold that I'm doing, similar build as to the prototype, but carbon fiber, textured carbon fiber instead of G10. I honestly would have bought the G10 one, um, but JD said that he would make it for me, so... Here we are. All right, we're up to about 14 people, almost 810. We're going to cut this box open, guys. What knife should I use? All right. I'm going to get Josh's Arius out of the way because I can't damage that. <laughs> All right, Jason. We're doing it. We're doing it live. Doing it live. I'm so excited. Ta da! What do we got here? There's a knife. There's a knife. Some certificates of authenticity. Thank you, Jason. All right. I'll keep some of this padding for when I inevitably send out something else. So one thing that was interesting, guys, was that I picked up my mini Tribeca at Blade Show. And uh, he didn't have any COAs, but it is actually the first mini Tribeca, which I didn't technically no i sort of figured that out because the first tribeca full size is owned by my friend winger who is in the channel um and 
you know, I picked them up at the same time. So it only made sense that if his was the first one, then this was the first mini as well. Um, so I asked him for a COA for the mini, and he obliged. Very nice. Thank you, Jason. And of course, the moment I've been waiting for, the Latterus number 001. So uh, if you guys have been following Jason at Laravo Knives on Instagram, you will know that he uh, has done a new model called the Latterus, which uh, I did take part in helping name, which was super fun. Thank you, Jason, for the opportunity. Uh, so you guys can see we're looking at an overall length of 8 inches, closed length of 4.75 inches, the frame slash liner, titanium liners with Timascus bolsters and white Juma scales. Uh, we did do a uh, Nichols Galactic Bacon Blade uh, Damascus, that is. Uh, the pivot is Steve Kelly Anodized Titanium Cage Bearings and Zirconium Pivot Collars. The Zerk Pivot Collars was a big thing for me. Uh, then we are looking at a Sculpted Galactic Bacon Damascus Pocket Clip and a Semi-Floating Zirconium Backspacer. Thank you, Jason, for the COAs. So I'm uh, pretty sure this is my Tribeca. I sent it in this pouch. Jason said he was uh, out of pouches and I could wait for him to pick up more. And I said, no, you get that thing in the fucking mail. Oh, wait, that's the Latteris. Ooh, it was, that literally felt like looking at porn that I wasn't supposed to see. Um, I want to open the Tribeca first. What the fuck is this rat? I think I'm going to need a handy dandy knife what on earth I can't see because it's clear tape on clear bubble wrap Jason you're making me look like a fool on live stream oh my god all right whew that was quite the debacle. Oh, baby, welcome back. Yes! Oh, man. Yeehaw. Okay. So, first thing I notice is one of the first things that Jason showed me, which was that he... Uh, polish these ivory scales with his new um, new buffer and they turned out absolutely amazing see if I can look at the mirror image inside the polish of the scales wowza yeah you did this these look amazing he did say that he uh, re-etched the blade. It looks like a much darker etch. Uh, and that he was able to make some adjustments to the pivot so that the action should be quite a bit smoother. Which it is, as a matter of fact. The whole thing feels slimmer than before, which is kind of odd. Jason, uh, I think I have some questions for you after the live stream, that's for sure. But man, definitely uh, got that detent track polished, didn't you? I don't feel any of that etch anymore. Uh, looks like we made some adjustments to the pivot. There's a screw kind of sticking out a little far here. We'll check that out later. But uh, yeah, it's definitely thinner. You took some stock off this thing, didn't you? Or maybe I'm tripping, but it does feel thinner. Anyway. So that is the mini, which is back from the spa. Now let's bust out the big girl. Oh my goodness. Wow, it's really light, Jason. You definitely uh, managed to take down the weight on this one for sure. Check that out, guys. Wow. We are looking at some sort of high heat bolsters. Some blues and purples. Uh, slightly slimmer flipper tab, which I appreciate. We have the dual anodized pivot and screws. 
white Juma scales. Uh, one thing that I really love with the um, bacon. Oh, I'm tripping. It's not. Uh, it's not thinner. That's wild. Um, the lines, of course, that in the closed position you can see on the bacon matching with the clip. I really love the way that looks. I'm really glad he was able to turn that out at the same angle, uh, or at least near enough that uh, it looks super neat. Uh, the whole thing's super smooth. Scales are incredibly smooth. Let's see how she flips. Woo! Feels maybe uh, a little bit oily. There does appear to be. There we go. All right. So we are looking at a galactic bacon Damascus blade, which has been oiled, and that's where the oil is coming from. There are a couple of uh, light issues with these uh, lines here which Jason explained to me before he sent the knife appear to be a flaw in the way that the Damascus was pattern welded not a huge deal especially on the uh, lock side there definitely love the blade it is wicked cool I really want a galactic bacon on this one nice winger got your Kirby back sweet Let's check out this floating Zerk backspacer. Semi-floating, anyway. Very cool. When he first showed it to me, uh, it wasn't quite finished. It was a little off kilter. Now it looks very symmetrical, very clean, very well done. Look at that. Super cool. He's really cut the weight out of this one. Nice solid action. Very neat. I just, man, the, um, oh, can't really, there we go. The, uh, the blade is just sick. What's up, Adam? <laughs> Thanks for joining. Uh, gotta love these zirconium pivot collars for sure. See how close I can get here. Pretty wild knife. Yeah, right? The bolsters look good with the Juma. I agree. We did a 74 volt um, anodizing on the liners. And then you'll see, so they're, they're pink or magenta when you look at them like this. And then as you turn the knife, you'll see Jason's done sort of a low voltage dark blue through the recess. The reason for that is because uh, any of you who have anodized titanium liners will know uh, you can, what am I saying? You can uh, sort of rub away the anodization, or the anodizing rather, and uh, get some some wear. Uh, you'll notice it's even, uh, he's done the blue even up here in these little crevices because that's where your finger lands. And over time, you'll rub away that anodizing. And the problem is, uh, if you anodize a really high voltage on titanium multiple times, you can start to damage and pit the titanium. Uh, so what he's done is a low voltage in the areas where you're likely to have high contact so that if I send this knife back in six months or a year for a spa treatment and some of the anodizing is worn off, he only has to go up to the low voltage to replace the color in those slots. He won't have to go all the way up to 74 volts and redo the magenta. Excuse me, which um, should help serve the finishing and the quality of the titanium better. So uh, that's a really cool, neat little touch. Interestingly, this knife feels like, a, I don't know, maybe the detent needs to be oiled a little bit. Uh, it doesn't feel quite as smooth as the mini Tribeca, which is unusual because... This has a larger pivot area, so I would imagine it's polished. Jason's here, so he can speak for himself, certainly. But uh, it does feel a little bit, I don't know, a little bit more Damascus-y. Still super smooth, though. It's interesting having a knife from Jason that's so thin. Um, because, you know, I'm used to his thicker knives. Let's compare it to the mini Tribeca. So, yeah, you can see even then the mini's still thicker. Uh, and if you look at like a full-size Tribeca, like what Winger has, um, you'll see that uh, 
his knives get quite big, which I typically like. But we had talked about trying out some, um, you know, adjustments in terms of weight. And he really brought the weight down on this one. Let me get my scale and uh, let's check this out. So uh, I know that when I did a review on the Mini, it was quite heavy. I think it was 6.7 ounces. Yeah, so 6.7 still what we're working with. Let's see how the full-size Laterus stacks up. I'm a little off to the side there. Let's 6.2. So you can see it's a bigger knife. Lots of the same materials. Zirconium, if I had to guess, is maybe a little bit heavier than Timascus, but but probably not enough to make a huge difference. So you are seeing a bigger knife that weighs less than the smaller knife. And that's because everything on this knife is slimmed down. Um, the scales are slimmed down. I believe the liners might be slimmed down just a little bit compared to his normal sizing. But uh, he's definitely been bringing it down a little bit, which makes his knives a lot more, you know, like a good tactical folder as opposed to just sort of like a, a piece of pocket jewelry. Um, you know, when the knives weigh a lot, they're really fun to carry and they're really nice and they feel really premium, but you know, they don't, um, they don't quite fit that niche that like, a that like a Thorburn might just because, you know, a Thorburn still feels very tactical. It's still very much like a regular flipper. Um, and you know, with, with the heavy knives, they're cool, but when you put them in your pocket, they weigh you down. Um, they just feel a little bit more premium, a little bit more artsy. So in this case, it's nice to see him. Uh, making some adjustments. We had talked about weight saving on this knife all the way from back when I originally ordered the build. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's really nice to see that. So he did comment. He said, it will smooth out more with some flipping. Hasn't been flipped nearly as much as your Tribeca. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Come to think of it, um, I hadn't really considered that the knife needed to be broken in. I'm so used to uh, buying things on the secondary or already having owned things like the Tribeca for a long time. So it does look like a change that was made to this Tribeca, which I wasn't aware of, was that uh, the top of the pivot was redone in blue while the recesses were left in green. Let's see if I can get some focus there. Mm, maybe not my favorite change. But they still look absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I'll have to figure out why this screw's sticking out. Point... 0 0.8 inch thick liners. Yeah, that's a little bit thinner than you normally do, right, Jason? I think they're even considerably thicker on the uh, Mini. And you guys can see one of my favorite things that Jason does is uh, this little triple cutout for his uh, relief cut. I am definitely a big fan of that. That was something that I mentioned in my original Tribeca video. I have to say, man, the scales on this thing are absolutely bonkers. Like... Oh, man, you guys can seriously see, like, reflections in uh, in the ivory here. Um, the uh, whole screw was green. Let me pull up a image here. I know I just posted it to r slash r slash grail knives, guys, which is our new, uh, our new, uh, subreddit for super dope knives yeah i'm looking at a uh, picture of it right now the whole screw before was green and with a blue pivot collar now it appears to be blue with green recesses and a blue pivot collar and uh mini was 0 0.093 yeah so definitely thicker on the mini which is cool um yeah josh they look good don't they i'm really happy with like all the colors on this knife it's super sick i love the blade I really wanted some bacon in my life. Not the best billet of bacon that's ever come to fruition, but uh, definitely quality. These Everything is just so well polished. That's what I can't get over. Um, you guys have to remember the first time I interacted with Jason and his knives was uh, Blade Show of last year. Um, and it's just so cool. I love seeing his improvements. Um, you know, these knives are fully handmade, guys. So I was talking to my boy Winger, who has a couple of Jason's knives as well. And, uh, you know, there's a real appreciation for somebody that, that goes to bat with a, with a fucking bandsaw and, like, a drill press. You know what I mean? Like, these, there's no water jet here. There's no CNC. Um, 
and you know Jason sent me pictures all along the way when I do some videos on this knife excuse me I will uh, be sure to include those I think uh, we talked about doing sort of like a what the process is of like ordering the knife and everything and so Jason sent me tons of great pictures all the way through the process so I can show those to you guys um, but yeah you know these knives are completely made from the ground up by hand uh, and that's not something that really a lot of makers are doing anymore in the market. Um, you know, Stan Wilson makes the non-flipper flipper by hand, according to Winger, but um, that's the only other really super nice knife. I know that Yuna uh, makes those knives by hand as well, but um, it's pretty rare to get a knife that's completely handmade. All of his uh, tolerances are really solid. Fit and finish is great. I love the uh, finger choil. Always a big fan of finger choils, especially on Jason's knives. Let you choke up. Uh, throat scratch. That's purdy. Thank you, sir. Uh, I developed the prototype uh, for, or the, the sort of mock-up in Photoshop of this knife way back uh, months ago. And it's been just a process of nailing down everything we were going to do all the way through, and it's been quite a joy. So yeah, this thing is sick. I like the sound it makes when it deploys. Good acoustics. Kind of interesting what the bacon does up here at the top. Makes these like weird little shapes as the lines start to kind of show what they really look like inside the bacon. Kind of cool how the etch worked out here. You start to see the tip coming back to silver silver all back through here which gives it a kind of a cool look like this i really like this profile though this side profile here with the lines here going this way and the lines here going this way sort of uh it gives it a really cool look i think i'm going to get a lot of good photos of the uh lock side of this knife i'm really excited for that so that about does it for the unboxing guys thanks for joining me for that. Uh, do you guys have any questions, anything you want to talk about? Uh, we are going to be looking at the uh, Holt Blade Works Spectre in a couple nights. Uh, Wednesday, that should be coming in. Again, just picked up this mini Bushido. So, lots of wicked new customs. And, uh, Let's see, what else do we have going on? Um, like I mentioned, videos are going to be a little bit slow for the next week or so while I get caught up with some new videos. Uh, we are going to be having a video on the Koenig Arius, which is on loan from my friend Josh. One major complaint about this knife, but other than that, uh, it's a pretty solid piece. So look forward to that video. Something else that we have is this... Um, CRKT knives, uh, this is the Quattro, which is based off of the Richard Rogers Axiom. Uh, this is a $40 knife on IKBS, and it was something that I bought to sort of, I don't know, give it a try, see how it turned out, check out Richard's uh, design on a production knife. Uh, as you can see here, I've already managed to scratch the G10, and that's from a very frustrating uh, involvement with, uh, with trying to disassemble this knife. Don't really want to talk about it right now. Pretty upset about it. <laughs> uh, you'll see there's some blood on my hand. That's from that moment. Uh, so yeah, this knife and I are not getting along so far. Uh, Akula, the Death Scythe. Do you have any of Corey Schumann's knives? I do not own any Corey Schumann knives. Uh, or Skewman, I think, as it's actually pronounced. Uh, I did purchase one for a friend for the... Uh, reddit knife swap uh event uh spooky swap which was super cool so i did have that knife uh for a little bit i uh, tried it, all of his knives really that belong to african custom knives at the new york custom knife show i did bring a couple of his knives that were brand new inbox from african custom knives home with me from the show uh and there was a showcase of those knives excuse me goodness gracious on the uh on the channel uh Probably won't own any of Schumann's knives uh, because, well, for a long time he didn't do clips, and now he's doing clips in a very cool way. Uh, he's got um, 
you know, he does these like onlays, these really thick onlays with third, third and fourth and fifth materials. Uh, and so sometimes now he's doing carbon fiber slabs on each side of the knife, but one is a slab and the other side is a clip but it looks like a slab from the side profile. It's just that he's sort of taken the slab of carbon fiber, screwed it in on one side, and then cut out what's under it on on the rest of the uh, piece. So those Actis clips, um, still probably not what I want in terms of a, a real clip, though. So uh, maybe over time I'll buy a skewman, but uh, not right now. Big thanks to uh, Jason for coming out to the stream. Thank you so much for the knives, dude. Um, I'll talk to you about the uh, the pivot on the Tribeca another time. I'm not too worried about it. I'm very happy with the knives. Um, and, yeah, it's it's been quite a haul, quite a while uh, waiting for this thing. Not that Jason took forever to make it, um, but just that, like, it's been quite an event, I suppose, is the way I need to phrase it. Uh, it's been really enjoyable. You know, this was pretty much the only example of me... Uh, fully sort of building out and imagining and dreaming up a knife. Uh, originally, this was supposed to be a full tri full size Tribeca, but then he started making the ladders prototypes while we were in the middle of my build. And I said, "Can I get a ladderist instead?" He said, "Yes." Um, and you know, just working with him and hashing it out on the materials, and we got the wrong billet of Damascus at one point, and it's just been um, quite an event. So I'm really happy with the knife. Really enjoyed. Uh, working with Jason, and uh, I look forward to owning more of his knives in the future. Love having my mini Tribeca back. The uh, scales on this thing are wicked, and the uh, knife is super smooth now. So, uh, yeah, big fan. Um, I'll give you guys another moment, see if you guys have anything else to say, and then we'll go ahead and hop off. We'll keep this one, I guess, a little bit shorter and sweeter. Um, and uh, let's see. Then uh, on Wednesday, we will uh, break this out again, and we will check out the whole Blade Works Spectre, which is going to be quite interesting. I know a few people who have the knife. Um, honestly, didn't even know that, that you changed the pivot color. No worries, dude. Um, I, I do prefer the green. I might send that back to you uh, sometime in the future. But for right now, I think I'm going to hang on to the knife and carry it a little bit and enjoy it because I sure have missed this girl. Uh, one of my favorite knives always has been... Um, it's kind of interesting, guys. I don't usually, I don't like to really like bring up money or anything, but uh, it must be said that this knife was the most expensive knife I had ever bought when I bought it and remained my most expensive knife I ever bought until I bought this knife, which superseded it in terms of value. Um, and so it's no secret that I like Jason's work because obviously uh, I've been investing in his work more so than anybody else's. Um, so I hope to see whatever he brings to Blade Show this year. I'm um, sure that I'm going to see some wicked cool things considering I picked this knife up off the table last year. Um, and with the ladderist and everything, maybe he'll do a mini ladderist. Uh, uh. <laughs> maybe he'll do a mini ladderist and uh, I won't be able to hold myself back. So uh, we'll see. But um, yeah, thanks so much, guys. I appreciate you showing up and checking these knives out. Of course, if you want to reach out to me and converse for any reason whatsoever, you can do so by reaching me at tovarishworks at gmail.com. Uh, consider subscribing if you guys like uh, live streams like this or, of course, video reviews of super awesome knives. Check me out on Instagram at tovarishworks. Uh, and a little bit of a secret uh, not really. I've said it in public a few times, but I will be working on some non Tovarish Works branded knife merchandise. So um, don't think like, oh, you know, I'm just going to buy a shirt with this guy's logo on it. I know people don't want to do that. It's not what I'm after. But I have done some really cool knife related uh, designs and I should be putting up some merch uh, sometime soon. So look forward to that. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm going to go ahead and shut down the stream and I will see you in a couple nights. Yes, I'm sure you can, Jason. Absolutely. Uh, I will see you guys in a couple nights. Thank you so much for joining me. 40 minutes. It's not a bad stream. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump off now, and I'll see you guys next time.